Our last lightning speaker uh, is Philip Chem, who trained as an economist and is now based in the Department of Land Economy. Uh, he's doing his PhD in the Cambridge Centre for Climate Change Mitigation Research. So thank you for being with us today. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, the title of my talk today is called Is Socioeconomic Implications of Environmental Policies. Uh, we know that air pollution uh, is a major health hazard, and uh, particularly in many densely populated urban centers. The main air pollutants identified by health experts are particulate matter, ozone, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxides. And these are produced by, you know, by industrial activities. And, uh, as a result, many rapidly industrializing countries are at high risk. So, for example, China and India, they have some of the worst polluted cities in the world because uh, they're producing more cars, they're, making more, uh, they're building more factories. And therefore, environmental policies, specifically policies which reduce ambient air pollution, have the potential to bring about significant public health improvement. However, uh, environmental policies aren't the only ways in which uh, public health improvement can be brought about. Um, we know at the national level, uh, health is strongly correlated with economic development. So a solution could be to develop a country economically, which will also be beneficial for the health. And at an individual level, health, is, uh, health varies substantially across socioeconomic status. We know income and wealth, as well as education, are some of the strongest socioeconomic determinants of health. So by making individuals richer and more educated, we can hope also to improve their health. Age and sex are also important influences on health. So is there a potential conflict between environmental and economic policies? And what would that implication be for health? Um, for example, if a country pursues, uh, pers pursues environmental objectives uh, while neglecting economic development, would that necessarily be good for uh, the health of its citizens in the long run? We therefore need a framework to integrate environmental and socioeconomic variables in relation to health. And to do that, I've developed a health economic model based on Grossman, which is often termed the health capital model. And being an economic model, it assumes that individuals try to maximize lifetime utility. Um, I can't go into the derivations, but the results are shown in, I've derived two equations, one and two. The first equation shows the optimal level of health uh, for any given age, and it's Dependent, it's dependent on various uh, factors. So uh, uh, T is H, Y is income, uh, delta zero is the exogenous rate of health depreciation, which can be interpreted as the level of ambient uh, pollution an individual is exposed to. A is the level of medical technology, PX is the price of a unit of consumption, PM is the price of a unit of medical care, well, H0 is the initial state of health, and H min is the minimum level of health necessary to sustain life. And we assume that um, uh, the income is a function of education. So the, inc the socioeconomic variable, i.e. Uh, the income, is highlighted in red, while the delta zero, the environmental variable, is highlighted in blue. The second equation is the length of life, or life expectancy. Uh, it's also dependent on these, uh, these variables. And this uh, diagram shows a simulation of what happens to a typical individual as he or she ages. The red line is what happens to a typical individual, uh, health declines as the person age until uh, v, uh, v star. And the, the orange lines show what happened when some of these variables changes. So for example, an increase in A, the level of medical technology, it lengthens the lifespan and also it, it, by, de uh, by, de uh, by decreasing the rate of health decline. And a similar effect uh, is observed for an increase in income uh, but uh, of less magnitude. Uh, the opposite is true for, for an increase in the exogenous rate of depreciation or an increase in the level of ambient, uh, ambient pollution. And uh, equation three, uh, equation one here can be uh, re reformulated uh, to show the optimal uh, rate of health decline over time. It doesn't show uh, the uh, the table. Some problem with the table here. Uh, the uh, the optimal level 
of uh, health depreciation can be represented by the uh, by the relative risk, and while the ambient uh, uh, pollution uh, P of PM 2.5 uh, can represent the uh, delta zero, the exogenous rate of health depreciation, GDP per capita can represent the income, and the consumer price index represents the price levels of PX and P, uh, PM. And by using global burden of disease database I, uh, at the national level, I, I did a regression analysis which shows that the relative risk uh, increases with increasing ambient PM 2.5 it decreases uh, when countries uh, become uh, wealthier, uh, measured by GDP per capita, and it also uh, the relative risk increases when the uh, w when the price level increases. And the the model can be equation th equation one can also be uh, modeled to uh, can also be used to model inequality. So we know that an increase in the exogenous rate of depreciation uh, or increase in the ambient pollution lowers health. So by, uh, by the same reason, the negative of that, uh, of that equation is the improvement in health. And if you differentiate the, uh, that equation with respect to the socioeconomic variables, uh, uh, shown in equation five, uh, it, it concludes that policies which reduce air pollution would benefit the high income, the highly educated uh, relatively less, but, the, uh, but uh, those who are of higher age more. Uh, therefore, the conclusion is that uh, such policies have the potential to reduce socioeconomic inequality. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the presentation. I just wanted to get a bit of a deeper understanding about what you meant by the optimal uh, length of life. So why would a longer life be less optimal or a, lower, a shorter life be less optimal in your model? Okay, so the, one of the main dogmas in many branches of economics is we assume that individuals try to maximize util utility over, uh, over life. Um, and so the and so we know that ma many people, uh, those who are of lower socioeconomic status, have the tendency to engage in unhealth unhealthy uh, unhealthy uh, behavior, which ultimately shorten the lifespan. So the point of the, uh, this model is to sh show that w what kind of what kind of socioeconomic variables, such as income, education, etc., would induce the individuals, rational individuals who seek to maximize their utility, choose choose to live, uh, choose to uh, choo uh, choose to engage. In behaviors which shorten their uh, length of life. Yeah, so. Thank you very much.